Hello, everybody. I have a nice uh, messy desk, which means it's well loved and well used. <laughs> and I thought I'd come on here today and show you how I travel with watercolors and how I make my own palettes um, so I can get kind of just what I want. The art that's probably my favorite thing to do besides Bible journaling and art journaling is uh, watercolors. That's more of, um, I'd say, it, my my craft, the thing I try to understand better, learn more about, always try to improve. Um, so yeah, watercolors are are my jam, and um, and I actually have an Etsy store where I sell my watercolor paintings. Trust me, if you've seen the art that goes into my Bible, um, you may not trust that I make something decent enough to share in an Etsy store, but I promise I do. Hey, Tanya, good to see you. Um, and so I just thought I'd share some of my ideas. Um, some of them are things I've come up with and other things are things that other people have come up with. And so I just thought I'd share and give you, I'm kind of an idea person, so Try not to be overwhelmed. You don't have to do all of this or any of this. Just if anything's helpful, let me know. And if you have any questions, since we're live, go ahead and throw them in the chat um, and I can see what we're up to. So, um, so yeah, so my favorite, um, since watercolors are kind of my thing, I've been trying out different brands of watercolors and my favorite so far are uh, the M grams and they are super fun because they are also made about an hour from my house um, and then shipped all over the world so that's kind of fun but they um, don't have every color that I want so like I have a whole bind here in this beautiful shell pink and this Daniel Smith Opera Rose is just pretty fantastic. And so anyway, I've got these tube paints and instead of um, like putting them on a ceramic dish every time I want to paint with them, the nice thing you can do with watercolors is, um, sorry, I don't know why my dog's going crazy. Paxton, quiet please. This is why I have to do voiceovers on videos and edit because I've got a noisy dog. Come here Paxton. We don't need to bark. Quiet. Um, so uh, the nice thing about watercolors is if you get them in tubes, um, you can let them dry out because they reconstitute with water. So if you buy panned watercolors, um, which are like the Prima sets we all love or things like that. Um, such a cute bark. I'm glad you think so, Tanya. I think you and I might be the only ones in the world that appreciate that cute little bark. I know nobody in my family appreciates it. <laughs> So tube watercolors can be squirted into pans um, to make them, um, are we still live? Okay, to uh, make them into pan paints. So I wanted to show you a few things I've done that are kind of fun. So my first thought was to make Altoid tins into, um, into a palette. Um, they're a little deeper than the pans need to be. And I had, I thought this would be too uh, small but I had I bought this glass cover for my phone and this teeny little thing check it out it's perfect size for pans um, you can get these pans on Amazon these are called half pan size if you get a double one it's a full pan size you can get either one they're just plastic really inexpensive and then I've um, glued this also has its own sticky. So you can use the sticky or you can glue it to onto the bottom of these half pans. And then I take my paints and put them in there and let them dry and then they're in a palette. And because they're magnetic, I can interchange things. So um, I'm gonna give you some palette holder ideas. So if you ever get a tin, like if makeup comes in a tin or, um, like your mints or your gum or something like that they are really great for storing um, a lot of craft supplies but the metal ones are super great if you want to do anything that's magnetic so I've got one of these that I'm still going to be working with I've collected a few Altoid tins um, I've also done a couple um, I've gone on eBay and collected a couple of um, vintage tins that used to have watercolors in them and then I'm turning them into my own palette. This one, um, 
<laughs> was so disgusting. I'm sure somebody just took it like out of their barn or something. It was so gross when I got it in the mail. I think my husband thought I'd lost my mind. He's like, what in the world are you doing with that? And then this one was super cute. Um, and they were super inexpensive because they were so gross. Um, this one came and it had like cat hair and all ew, all sorts of stuff in the paints. So um, I washed out the paints. I've kept them in case there's some like value someday that I would want them for. I don't know. They'll probably go in the garbage eventually. But, um, but these tins are super cute and you can do the same thing. And then you've got kind of a cute vintage-y thing to put them in. But of course, um, I can't just leave this like this. So I decorated one. Um, I spray painted it with some paint that works on metal. Um, I didn't do a perfect job, so don't worry about being perfect. Um, and I didn't want the paint to build up too much on the sides because then it wouldn't close right. And then I just glued on this piece of paper um, that was from a pack from Illustrated Faith and I just, or Bella Boulevard or somebody, somebody like that. Um, and I just love that saying and I love these colors. So this is a palette where I've put um, watercolors that I've bought off of Etsy that are homemade watercolors. Um, and I kind of keep them separate because I don't know if they are light fast enough um, for professional painting. So these are for play and for fun. And then um, I got this tin idea from Lindsay Decor. You gotta check out her YouTube channel. She's fantastic. She um, did a whole tutorial on how to turn this Tim Holtz um, container into a big container for all of your Prima paints. So your Prima paints come in half pans already. Um, and they come in a cute little box. But if you're tired of digging through like two, three, four boxes of them, it's really fun to have them all in one place. And um, I love the little tins they come in. They're super cute. Um, but after a while, I kind of agreed with Lindsay. It would be nice to have them all in one place. So I did what she did and um, glued magnets on the bottom of the half pans. They are num or they're, um, labeled by numbers. So if you ever want to know what number you've run out of, I just marked that in Sharpie on the side of the pan and then I stick it in and what's really cool is again since it's magnetic they don't fall out. This is the tin that's made for distress inks and so what's kind of cool is it comes with this little separator so your distress inks sit perfectly in there but what I do is I take that out and I set it over here and it's my mixing palette. So um, that makes it nice and then this is easy to take out and rinse off if I want to. I also made my own little color chart since some of the colors are hard to tell what they're going to look like. I just drew this on a piece of watercolor paper, painted a little swatch, and I tuck it in. And then since the window is see-through, I went ahead and took one of my kind of painting doodles and did it on the back of that. And then it looks pretty. So that's kind of fun. That's a Lindsay Decor idea. I cannot take credit for that one. So that was um, super fun, super helpful. I have not regretted that choice. I am loving having all my Prima paints in one place. Then, um, so I wanted to show you what you can do to like kind of take things on the road. So this one is probably um, going to be my favorite to-go palette because these are my professional colors that I have. And as you see, I don't have a ton. Um, and you can tell I love pinks and purples and turquoise because that's pretty much my whole palette. <laughs> um, but, so I've got my favorites already loaded in here, but if I want to take more on the road, I can always say, oh, I want to just have some glitter to play with. So I'm going to pop this one out of here and put it in here. And I don't have a real peachy color that I like over here so I'm gonna take that one so you can just pop these out and oh gold glitter when do you not need gold glitter when you're on vacation right and how about some purple glitter yeah so that's super fun and they all just fit in there and I can close it up I can rubber band it if I'm concerned about it opening um, but since they're dried out they won't spill they'll be just fine and then I've also taken my um, why can't I think of what they're called? Gelatos. I took a slice off of my gelatos, heated it up a tiny bit in this ceramic dish with my heat tool. I just cut it off 
cut a little sliver off and then I kind of melted it and just a tiny bit not till it was liquid but just till it was soft and then mushed it into these and of course you can't use it like a crayon but you can use it like watercolor paint or you can get your finger wet and um, use it that way um, or a baby wipe so these are kind of fun way to uh, take a bunch of gelato colors with you where you go so I've got my gelatos and these are these are doubles that I have of some Caran d'Ache colors. So I was just like, well, this will just be my wax crayon, water, watercolor crayon box. But I might want to take some of these on vacation too because they travel well and they're different colors and they just have a different property and texture. So I can pop them out of here and put them in here. So these are just some ideas of what you can do to create watercolor palettes, maybe in ways you haven't thought of before. Um, and you can keep them all organized at home and then condense them or maybe you don't want to take something this big Maybe you just want to take your Altoids tin that still needs to be washed out gross um, <laughs> And you can just pop in a few paints into your Altoids tin Pick your favorites. Maybe you just need a good blue one good red and uh, maybe you want your white and some more glitter and then you've got you've got that cute little place for all your paints. What I found too though is this one. I have plenty of room to add um, a paintbrush to take it on the go or a water brush. My favorite water brush lives in there. Really cool. Um, the gelato idea is cool. Oh, I'm glad you like that idea. Um, <laughs> Oh, Tanya, you used Aileen's Stick It over and over. Oh, cool. Yeah, you can You can also, if you don't want these to be movable, you can also glue them down with like an E6000. You could just permanently put these things into palettes if you want. I just, I like the modular idea. So this is my favorite water brush pen. Now I've got gelato on my finger. Um, and it fits in here. I can't believe how, what fits in this teeny tiny little, thingy that just surprises me every time but you can make this little Altoids tin um, even the little mini Altoids tin hold five or six colors comfortably so those teeny teeny little ones um, work really well too and then the last watercolor set that I have that I was like well these are really cool paint pans and they're beautiful paints but they're um, they're more put in like Legos <laughs> Um, they snap into place and so I was like well how can you take those well you can just take them you can pick like let's say I want this rose color and I want to take a gold with me um, so I set that aside I can just toss those in and they can just be kind of sandwiched among my other stuff and I could even use other paints to kind of hold them in place so even though I can't really stick a magnet to them because they, they wouldn't they wouldn't still fit in here if I stuck a magnet to them. Um, I can still take them and it still closes just fine. And my dog's throwing a fit again. Awesome. Awesome. Love an emotional chihuahua. They're all emotional chihuahuas, aren't they? Or did I just get a lucky one? <laughs> also, they're, um, they make these teeny tiny little water brushes um, that are kind of fun for travel too. Um, so if you're trying to find something like really teeny tiny and you want to just rubber band these two together, you can always do something like that too. So anyway, um, what professional brands of watercolors do I use? That's a good question. My favorite are M. Grams. Um, they are made with a honey binder and so they re-wet really easily. And um, until I started playing with paints, all these um, in here are my M. Gram paints from here over. Um, it, except for that one. That one's Opera Rose by Daniel Smith. So I have mostly M. Graham because I really like the honey binder. Um, it just, you barely have to do anything and they turn into paint. So I'm not spending a lot of time trying to mix them and get them the right consistency. Every time I re-wet them, they're just, they just melt like butter. So love those. Um, and you can order them. Um, from Amazon in single colors. You can get them from Blick.com. Any major online art stores should carry these. Um, they're all, depending on the pigment, they're all around six to $10 for a 15 milliliter tube. 
which is a half ounce, um, which in watercolors is a bigger tube. And that's pretty much what all, all this kind of level of um, watercolors cost. But that tube is going to last forever. Um, I, also, I love Daniel Smith. I had to kind of get in on that bandwagon because everybody loves Daniel Smith. And so I have his Opera Pink, which does not disappoint. It is a beautiful, it's right here. It's just gorgeous. Um, actually, I have two pans of it in here on accident, but I thought maybe that was a subconscious decision. Um, and then there was a deal on um, Selenier's uh, at Blick one weekend. And so if you ordered three paints, you got a free brush. And it's a brush that I needed and wanted. And um, so I bought some colors I didn't have. These Selenier's are gorgeous. Um, I, this... Um, this one right here, 671, um, what is it called? Helios Purple, stunning. This one um, is a uh, Holbein. I only have, I have Holbein in this, and then this is a gouache paint um, that is permanent, which is a really cool, fun thing. But this Holbein color is shell pink, and it's right there, and you'll see it looks more like a gouache, and it does paint more like a gouache, but you can totally water it down. Um, but it does this kind of milky pink that's um, still translucent, um, but just not as translucent as other colors. They must have mixed some, like, some white into it to make it, um, I doubt it's a single pigment color. And I don't see the pigment colors. Yeah, there's two pigment colors in here. So my guess is that there's some kind of white um, mixed in to make this beautiful pink. Um, but I think other than like colors that I wanted that um, M. Graham doesn't have, like M. Graham doesn't have a shell pink like that. They don't have this um, opera rose. They have a couple other pinks that I love. Um, I pretty much am sold on M. Graham's. So I kind of just go outside of that zone when I want to get something that I either I want to try it because I'm curious because somebody who I uh, like learning from loves it and I want to know why they love it um, <laughs> or there's a deal like these and these are professional quality so I didn't mind adding them to my collection um, so I could get the cool brush that I had my eye on for free <laughs> so yeah that's that's my watercolor so I've got everything from you know, the Prima paints, which are kind of a really nice, um, but kind of student grade-ish level, um, all the way up to, you know, the Holbeins and the Selenier's and the M. Grams and everything in between. And um, I'm just careful that when I do art for my Etsy store, I use only the professional light fast paints, but for my Bible and my own art and for fun and for glitter, hey, anything goes, right? So I'm going to be doing a few of these videos. Um, you have yet to find a true good red. Okay. Well, red, red, red. Um, this is actually this crimson gouache stains. Well, it's more than just staining. It's permanent once it's dry. It is stunning. Um, and this Selenier Rouge Red, it's got a bit more of a pinky tone to it. Um, but it's pretty red. It's it's kind of fire engine red. It just might have a little bit more, I don't know, a tad more blue in it. So it leans more towards the pink side than an orange side. But it is a pretty true red. So if you want to try the Selenier 636 Rouge. Um, oh, it, in English, it's Rouge in French. In English, it's Selenier Red. <laughs> so that one I I love. And then this new gouache that I've been uh, playing with, this is more of a, it's more like a pinky red for sure, but it's gorgeous too. So a good red red that I've just been messing around with is this Selenier, if you want to give that a try. Yeah, Fire Engine Red, right? It is hard to find. Um, and when I started, um, since I just, I naturally lean more towards pinks, I got Quinn Rose, which is really pretty, but it's not not red and I found I just needed a red too so I totally get what you're talking about um because yeah um some things just need to be fire engine red so this is one I've tried I'm sure M. Graham has one I just haven't um I haven't 
tried it yet. I bought a kit of four M grams to try and it came with a maroon color that's um, pretty, but I probably wouldn't buy it again. Just, I don't paint much with this color. Um, I love wearing this color, <laughs> but when I paint, um, it's not my favorite color. So instead of buying more sets and getting kind of surprised by M Graham, I asked them to send me a, a poster of their paint colors in their watercolors. And so I can see kind of what they look like. And now I just order individual tubes of ones that I really want to try instead of getting the four pack on Amazon or something like that. So um, individuals has been kind of a fun way to go for me. Or if somebody recommends something um, and it's something I think I'll use, I will go and uh, check that out. Um, oh yeah, watercolor newbie. Yes, um, I was a watercolor newbie. <laughs> I guess we all are. <laughs> And I'm still pretty much a newbie, um, but I've learned a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and why, why you want professional colors and which brands and why and what do they do and what is staining versus granulate. All those kind of things are super fun um, to learn if you're into watercolors, um, but there is a bit of a learning curve. So just be patient with yourself and, um, and have a lot of fun along the way um, and uh, watch a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> Um, from Fun Watercolors. I love the watercolor misfit. She's fun. Um, and uh, there's a few other watercolorists I can't think of right now. Lindsay, the frugal crafter. If you haven't run into her on YouTube, I don't know how you've missed her. Um, but you got to find Lindsay, the frugal crafter. She loves watercolors and does them very often. And she can paint light, like, like light reflecting off of bottles and things like that in shadows that are just, yeah, Frugal Crafter, yes, love her. Um, I love her watercolor. She makes everything seem so easy. Like I don't, I don't even know. So I'll like, I'll rewatch her broadcasts and pause it and paint and pause and paint and pause and paint and try to try to learn what she's teaching because um, she just, yeah, she makes things seem so, she breaks things down very well. She's a great, great teacher. So, um, so yeah, those are my ideas. And I thought, um, I would do a couple other travel ideas. Uh, she slaps it down and it's a beautiful, that is exactly true. That is so true. She just, she does. She slaps it down and somehow it ends up absolutely gorgeous. Oh goodness. But I love that because, you know, if you've been on my channel more than five minutes, you know, I am totally not a perfectionist and, um, don't ever really want to bring perfectionism into my work um, as a watercolorist either because I think the effortlessness of watercolors are what makes them beautiful and I'm actually trying to learn to be more effortless with them instead of because with acrylics man you can slap down fun layers and all sorts of stuff and watercolors like less is more that is so hard for me um, oh you're new to my channel and enjoying it oh I'm so glad you're here and I'm glad you're enjoying it um, so I will probably do another one of these because um, in a few days or in a week or so, because we're coming up on summer and people go camping and traveling and visiting family and kids, taking kids to the park and things like that. And you just never know um, when you might need a travel kit full of art supplies. So if you guys want to see kind of what I've made here um, to kind of take along with me, um, I can show you guys that and just give you some ideas. Um, and then I also will kind of switch things out if I want to take mostly Bible journaling stuff or art journaling stuff. But usually I want both, so I just throw a little bit of everything in there. <laughs> so, but I may, I, when I ordered this bag, I thought it was going to be bigger than it is. Like, it totally fits in camera here. I thought it was going to, like, take up half my desk. And then when it came in, I was like, oh, that is way too small. But trust me this thing weighs probably 10 pounds and I've got more than enough in it um, so I do not need a bag half the size of my desk practicing restraint in carrying art supplies and painting watercolors whoo restraint that must be that must be my lesson right now that I need to be learning in life all right guys restraint Eek. speaking of Bible journaling have I ever tried using oil pastels I have not. I've been, um, well, I used an oil-based stencil paint. That that turned in kind of a disaster. Um, 
because I not only used it and then I heated it up with a heat tool. I don't know if I could even find the page quickly to show you. Um, but it's on my channel here and um, it's pretty funny because I was all proud of myself for finding a deal on those stencil paints and they ended up being an oil, basically like an oil um, pastel in a pan. Um, they were really creamy and great for stenciling, but they totally bled through my Bible page, especially when I melted it into my Bible page. I don't know what I'm doing with oils. Um, and so, um, shoot, I can't, I can't find it. Where is it? I don't even remember which part of the Bible it was in now. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it was kind of a funny experiment. Um, and it was one of those, you may not want to do this one yourself days that I have here on my channel. Um, but, uh, I don't like the smell of oil paints and I'm not usually, I'm not a, I'm not picky about smells, but I almost picked up some oil pastels the other day. I even grabbed some Crayola ones thinking at Michael's thinking they would be, um, they would smell better than they do, but now they still smell like oil pastels. I cannot find the page where I totally did that disaster that is so funny um if I wasn't looking for it I would flip right to it um but anyway so I don't know how well they work in the bible and I don't know too if they um if not only they bleed through a back side if they would rub off on the other side so I don't know but I love them for I love the concept for like art journaling um, cause they are creamy, but there's a couple of, um, water-based oil pastel type crayons out there that are not the Caran d'Ache or Gelato's. Um, they're creamier than that, that I want to pick up and give a try. So those will be showing up on my channel sometime soon. Um, cause the, I want something that's really blendable with water or with your finger. And Gelato's are a little bit, but I want something even creamier if I can find it. So... Um, that is something that I am, that's on my wish list on Amazon that is about 500 pages long. <laughs> Actually, what I do is I throw everything in my Amazon cart and then I move it to save for later, save for later. And my husband's always like having to erase stuff out of our account if I, if he needs to order something. Cause he's like, why do you have $300 of art supplies in the cart? I'm like, cause I always have 300 and some they never make it to the purchase point, but anyway, I seriously, I cannot find that page. That is so funny. Um, it was a funny page. I was laughing at myself. So anyway, it's in here somewhere. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, water, um, watercolor pastels and, um, chalk pastels are fun, but they rub off too and they're super messy but um yeah there's a lot of water-based uh crayons some people call them crayons some companies call them oil pastels that are water soluble um so that aren't gelatos or distress crayons or caran d'ache um so you can look for those um and crayola has their own brand of those too um that are their kind of watercolor based crayons and um, those look kind of cool. But yeah, there's a couple of them that look like they'll smudge and be really creamy. Um, like an oil pastel without the oil pastel smell. So anyway, so there's um, travel tips for today. And um, if you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments after the broadcast is done. I do read every comment that everybody posts. Um, and if you have a question, I try to get back to it. If I don't, just say, hey. Maybe you forgot, because maybe I did. Um, <laughs> sometimes I read through comments and I'm just chilling out with the family or something, and um, then I forget to go back and actually answer the question. You can hound me. It's okay. All right, you guys. Well, I hope this was helpful. I hope it gave you some fun ideas. Um, if things can be cute and pretty in my world, um, I make them cute and pretty. So this is how I turned garbage into something useful. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today, you guys, and I will see you all later. Have a great afternoon and evening. <laughs> Bye.